Good evening, everybody, and welcome to round number three of our, our Legacy Fight Night. I am Dr. Leo, here with my homie Mike Diff, and we're here for the last round of Meme Night. How you doing? How you doing, Mike? I'm doing pretty well. I uh, I love Meme Night, and I'm really looking forward to this final match of the night. Uh, it is Oliver V on Kobolds, uh, Kobold Cheerios, and... Uh, uh, also MB. known as the new tier one. Uh, this is this is this is the tier one deck. This is this is is everything. It, you know, dies to force will doesn't matter. This is the new tier one. Um, but uh, and be, MB on most. Uh, it's a so when I was looking through this deck, and I really like this, uh, this deck because it's a collection, it's a toolbox collection of cards. So there's an answer for everything, but it's essentially, uh, if you remember the old uh, survival toolbox decks, this is similar to that, except for it uses Fauna Shaman to tutor out uh, with the creatures and then Aether Vial to put it into play. So it's a mid-range toolbox deck that also happens to run Grizzlebrand, attracts a, and a couple other things because you use uh, loyal retainers to uh, bring back a uh, legendary card from your graveyard that you then threw it into the graveyard with from uh, the Fauna Shaman to yeah. Uh, do I have the Pepe Silva Sylvia thing in the background yet? uh dukes how you doing thanks for uh joining us tonight verts long time no see thanks for coming out yeah this is this is a wild deck so i've never seen this deck before uh i have heard of this kind of a deck before but i've never actually played it before all uh, right dukes how you doing buddy been a while but uh yeah this is a green sunsia deck i love it it it, uh, it, it is is definitely wild uh i any any green sun deck i'm on board for yeah but this deck on the other hand is a little bit closer to your avenue of play because this is cheerios it was kobold cheerios and uh yeah if you've never seen the deck kobold work basically it is a glimpse of nature deck uh and i would go as far as to hedge that is a better glimpse of nature deck than elves whoa all right I didn't come here to be assaulted. Uh, uh, but that's the thing. This, de this deck likes to cast Glimpse of Nature so much, it runs Noxious Revival to put Glimpse of Nature back on top of the library so you can cast it twice in one turn. It also runs Beck, beck and Call. Yes, uh, and also Beck and Call. And which... this, this deck wants to play Glimpse or Glimpse Effect and then just jam zero drop kobolds to essentially storm off, if you will. Uh, yeah, this is... If you haven't watched this deck go off, it is absolutely bananas um, in the best way possible. Yeah, this is, uh, this is the epitome of like the, uh, the charge music that uh, uh julian na plays during his stream because of the fact that like you do win a lot of your games by actually playing the one of goblin bushwhacker in the deck and swinging out with like 20 zero drops that are all zero ones um because oh, there's the other one too right Oh, no. Yes. No. Uh, so it's only one goblin. So the way that this deck, uh, so the way this deck works, like uh, you get your glimpse effect, you get your kobolds going, and then you play things like either grape shot. Well, you use scapegoat, which is one white sacrifice a creature, return any number of target creatures you control to your own hand. So you bring them all back, and then you win with a grape shot wind. And yeah, this this deck is wild. I love it on like a lot of levels, but at the same time, oh, oh, are we just, oh, it's a land grant. Okay. It's a land. Uh, so the land grants are to facilitate the uh, three lands in the deck. 
Um... Oh, you here can't, we go. You can't be drawing lands when your entire strategy uh, revolves around uh, not drawing lands. Did you did you just see the noxious revival for the put uh, put the glimpse back on top and just recast it and the engine is going. Uh, so we saw noxious revival put a uh, glimpse on top, cast the cobalt, draw the glimpse, cast the glimpse, cast the cobalt, draw two. Yep, and we still have, I think, at least two more. Yeah, at least three more yeah. Lotus Petals left in the deck. This is and the Grave Shots in hand. This, it's essentially over unless Oliver completely breaks out. I uh, I was super jealous when Oliver told me he was building this because uh, you are correct that this is right up my alley. Uh, oh yeah, and uh, when I posted the the deck list in the um, uh deck discussion page on the discord exclamation discord in the chat uh he was like uh he he snapped it up for me right away oh yeah uh, like uh, oliver started talking about this and i was like yeah no, there's no way and you're oh, just like no did oliver whiff oh i did oliver brick no way no way there's no way oliver bricked he is apparently uh oh no oh no 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 in the chat. Oh no, oh no, 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 no. Oh, this might be a brick. Okay, so my question is do you cast the uh, grave shot here just to kill the fauna shaman? It looks like that's what's happening. Oh no. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wah, wah, wah. Uh, uh Chaotic, uh, no, chaotic. Beyonce, does it, can we get like a womp womp uh, going on? Oh man, the fizzle. Uh, can we get some Fs in the chat? <laughs> Rest in Pepe Oliver. I am. Uh, I hope you can win with zero one B, Tommy. Um. Oh Catherine, no. I might be able to whip up, uh, whip up some dice factory for uh, a future, a future meme night stream. I might I have had... that sitting on the shelf behind me. I yeah. May, may or I, may not have it sitting right behind me. I think Oliver missed the, yeah. Oliver missed the Dryad Arbor. Oh, yeah. Uh, that, that might be big, because I think MB is still stuck on two lands. How do you, how do you miss off of Double Glimpse turn? What's in hand? <laughs> attack to send the message oh wait are they one ones oh no they're zero ones i mean there are 20 non-creature spells in the deck wow so could have could have drawn four off the top that would be some really bad luck though this is uh, well there's only three lands in the deck matafoga there's only three lands and two of them are on the board. Um, wow. Yeah, that is unfortunate for I mean, Oliver. I mean, I'm not, I'm not upset because we get to keep watching some quality, uh, quality magic here. But uh, oh yeah, so we're seeing a mom come in off of the the vial. Yeah, and honestly, I can see certain things. I mean, there are some instant I win the games in MB's deck. Like, for instance, Leovold. Literally, Oliver's deck cannot be uh, Leovold at all. Well, it could cast a call. Is that... No. Uh, mm, to create the 411 of flying birds. Go bad beats. Flirt, uh, flirt, uh, I mean, I think it requires every single... No. It requires three petals and all three lands on the board, so it's not it's not impossible. It is a thing that can be done. Uh, oh, okay. Noxious uh, definitely does help. Wait, you're getting back the the dork. So to me, that reads as either Oliver has a beck and call or a glimpse in hand. Yeah, one hundred percent needs some way of. Yeah, it's going to be a beck uh, if he's tapping two. Yeah, and it looks like. 
meddling name image named glimpse of nature as well so that, that was that was the other one of that was saying that like could really turn the uh yeah thankfully there are there are both uh both of the draw options in oliver's deck yeah exactly and that is to play around metal and uh, play around meddling mage as well so i uh, so can't imagine that oliver whiffed again so Beck is the exact same thing as uh, Glimpse of Nature, except for it gets an Enter the Battlefield trigger, not a cast trigger. Not a cast trigger, yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. There was another no uh, no creature draw from from Oliver there. That is that is tough. There are, wow. There are 33 creatures in this deck. Yeah. I mean, that's... <laughs> thank you uh, thank you Corey. really unfortunate yeah uh, i mean that's three more creatures than elves runs yeah and looks like finding a spell quill here see i i don't know why you're finding a spell queller which forces you to leave up vile or something like that like just find leobold and uh win because I, I i don't think the deck is capable of winning through a leobold at least within game one Oh my gosh, there's so many one ofs in this deck. One of Opposition Agent, one of Peacekeeper, one of Sanctum Prelate. Um, if MB either does not have another land or uh, already has something along the lines of Leovold in hand, then I think Spell Queller is a, a reasonable choice. Yeah, I I could see that, but I mean, you have a vial going on three right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if if uh, something like Leovold is already in hand. Yeah, if something like Leovold is already in hand. Uh, my question is, what's the Atraxa doing in this deck? Um. Ooh, scavenging ooze. That's that's pretty harsh as well. Bad beats. Bad beats. Uh, it does have flying vigilance and lifelink. Yeah, dudes, we're we're gonna have to get you on at some point. Hey, uh... <laughs> <laughs> the only True. the only question I ever encounter when I'm facing down an Atraxa is how do I kill you fast enough? Yes, yes, exactly. And that's for loyal retainers. Okay. So Loyal Retainers, for those that haven't seen that card around in a long time, two and a white, sacrifice it, return target, non-legendary creature from your graveyard to the battlefield, activate this ability only during your turn before attackers are declared. So this is how you get, like, Grizzlebrand, attracts, uh, uh even things like Leobold back onto the field after discarding them using the... Um, Fauna Shaman. The Fauna Shaman, yeah. That is nasty that is oh yeah nasty stuff oh 100 i agree uh these decks are so much fun oh Holy I, cow. I i see this is what got me into legacy really is the you know you can play a string of creatures that are effective and different matchups depending on what you require and just they're all connected because they're green creatures that you can find off of green sun zenith or off of a pod or off of some things like fauna shop back in the day it was survival of the fittest that essence of like a toolbox based deck is the reason why i, I was so attracted to legacy it's so great wow well, thank you for the follow so it looks like uh mb might just be looking for some clarification on beck and call which yeah. I I don't blame him. That card, uh, until I saw it in this deck, I don't think I'd ever read it. Yeah, uh, I think I read it when I was drafting my sealed deck in uh, Gate Crash Limited, or was it Great Cash Limited, or was it? No, this was Dragon's Maids and Dragon's Maid Limited, and yeah, that was the only time I read it. And it's until I played Legacy, then I was like, okay. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Sanctum Prelate does stop the other Sanctum side. Sanctum Prelate is oh. kind of a nail, right? Because you just named two, or no, wait. No, 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 you no, You have no, to no. name. It's the total CMC. So, what was that? 
Seven. Yeah. Uh, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you have to name eight. Eight. I think you have to name eight here because that that's the only way to stop the uh, the rest of it. And Oliver is one of those bad spots, and uh, this is this is one of those things like why I, uh, why I oftentimes harp on people's need to play Force of Will, Hill. Because you don't always need to play Force of Will. You can also just have a good, effective threats that oh are... God. Melfi, I did not even think about the, the concept of naming zero. Uh, but that is way, way more effective, I guess. <laughs> well, Sanctum really only stops non-creature spells with Converted Oh, it cost. does? Yeah, non-creature Okay, okay. Thanks, uh, thanks, dude. But uh, you it, like you don't really need to play. Hey, like you can have other effects that are, don't cause you to two for one yourself. You can re rely on a strong threat. You can, I mean, I I say Leovold is the best example of this because it's a solid body with a decent uh, text box and it replaces itself a lot of times. Like you just gotta you gotta land a solid threat sometimes. But like, yeah, I understand Force Will is important for like those types of matchups uh, as well, but. Yeah, uh, but it oh. looked like Oliver scooped it up there, which you basically locked out. Yeah, I could, um, I could not see. I did, I did not see it going this way. I thought Oliver was for sure going to get there. Yeah, no, I, those those early whiffs really hurt. Um, so let's talk about sideboards. So yeah. Oliver's sideboard is one stomping ground, a, a three gut shot, three surgical extraction. Four Xanted Swarm and four Ingot Chewers. I like Gutshot. I I think Gutshot's solid. I mean, you have a lot of like smaller deck, uh, smaller creatures that you just ping away. So, yeah, yeah. The issue, the big issue is Fauna Shaman being a two-two. Yeah, that, that's the other part that uh, sucks. But but if you well, can uh, get it off the board and then surgical it. MB is going to uh, have a hard time getting through that. It looks like the creator of the Discord, Rad, is in the chat. Hey, Rad. Uh, thanks for hanging out with us, homie. Thanks for starting this whole thing. You basically pushed a uh, moss-covered stone down a hill, and it got much larger than you expected. So thank you for starting this community, homie. Rad is in the chat? I missed yeah, that Rad's really. in the chat. W uh, Wog is apparently a hey, Rad. Oh, all right. Well, hey, Rad. How you doing? Hi, uh, boss. Don't yell at me. I'm doing my job. <laughs> but going to the sideboards for MB, we got one fairy macaw. Oh, Wagga is not rad. Oh, it's not rad? I thought I thought I saw uh, that the rad was, uh, that somebody was rad. I, I swear MTG Paper Legacy was uh, saying that it was rad. Oh, it's not rad? Oh, I am so sorry, dude. dude. But uh, yeah, for those who don't know, rad is super cool. And he's going to be on our podcast. So no, Corey just said something was rad. Yeah, it's rad that they are with us. Uh, okay, I see. I see what you did there. There, I was the wrong right. one. You're keeping me on my toes there, Doc. I got to keep an eye on you, I guess. Yeah, I know. Apparently, I'm all over the place tonight. But uh, so looking in, in sideboards here for MB, it's once again a lot of one ofs. We got one fairy macabre, one Garuk Relentless, uh, Nick Fit staple, and I will 100% always stay by this card. I love this card. Uh, one Gilded Drake, one Is It Static Caster, which seems really, really good in this matchup. Uh, one Cabal Castle of Allocation, one Magus of the Moon, one Orzov Pontiff, two Rest in Peace, one Sanctum Prelate, three Swan Songs because so on song and two winter orb what do you like here um a lot fairy macabre uh like fairy macabre. static caster uh I mean, static caster Magus looks the like moon shuts off every single one of his lands static caster um, can just nuke four cards in one tap like uh, Orzov Pontiff is is great. Uh, oh my gosh! It, oh my gosh! Haunt is actually good right here. Yeah, but you have to have something dying. Enter the battlefield or dies. But I mean, it's good off of Vial, so I I can see that. I don't think that we're gonna need anything 
any like Kimball or anything like that because no. you're only really casting one real good non-creature spell and that's it. Yeah, at, at, you know, at most two or three, but... True, Loyal Retainers does die. Loyal Retainers does die. That uh, that can work with the Orzhov Pontiff. Oh, man, that's that's good. That's not too bad. Uh, that can, that's a, definitely a way to treat it. And honestly, you do have a lot of cuts here. Like, the Mariki Rebirit, like... I... I've never seen that card play and uh, played in Legacy, but like, yeah, you can cut one of those. So you... the, the fun thing here is you do still have to have for both of these decks a critical mass of creatures. Yes, one hundred percent. Oliver needs to be drawing, and MB needs to have creatures in hand to pitch to Fauna Shaman. Um, so I, I, you know, with Oliver being on thirty three and MB being on thirty five creatures, I don't think we're gonna have an issue with maintaining critical mass. But, uh, you know, I don't know how well either of these decks mulligan, but I, I can't imagine that it's overly well. Uh, I wonder, does anybody, if, because I am kind of, oh, most is an actual established archetype. Can anybody, uh, does anybody know where it comes from? I've never seen most as a card. It looks like a creature toolbox using Aether Vial, Green Suns, and stuff like that, but I don't know the origination for it. It stands for something. Thanks, Bear. Yeah, it stands for something. Thank you, Bear. <laughs> I Brilliant reporting, my friend. Yeah, the name. Hey, where does the name come from? Like, what does it stand for? Because I've never yet. It's the creatures. Mother runes. Uh, sh shaman. Mother of runes. M. Mariki. Fauna opposition. Mariki. Survival opposition. trade wind rider. Oh, this was the original. Okay. Okay. Mariki, that explains so. And the trade wind riders allows you to rebuy depth of creatures you control, return target permit to its owner's hand. Oh, I like that. Nutty. That uh, that's that's cool. Oh, that's a Leovold for MB. Oh, turn three Leovold. Oh wow. Uh, Oliver Drago. Yeah, and uh, with Oliver's deck construction the way it is, uh, the way that you remove a Leovold is with three gut shots. Or uh, three cobalts and a grape shot. True, three cobalts and a grape shot. That will definitely do it. Once again, get three triggers of drawing three cards. Thank you for ancestral visioning, uh, ancestral recalling me. But this this just seems harsh. Like I honestly thought this was going to be going the other way with this, uh, you know, no force of will or anything like that. Super fast combo deck that can just flood the board so fast. And like honestly, we've seen MB just crawl back. I mean, game one was a little bit like scary runnings, but now that MB knows w what the matchup is dependent on, like, oof, this so is. Oliver is going to cast a Memnite and pass, or Frogmite. No, that's a Mem Knight. That's a Mem Knight. Mem Knight. Yeah. Yeah. Champagne, I, I, I am in agreement. This does seem like a, uh, definitely a tough matchup. Uh, I think I mean, Oliver has like had the had the chance to get underneath MB really quickly and just go off, uh, you know, turn turn one. Yes. Um, but once MB has a chance to set up, it's it's a really, really tough uphill climb for for Oliver to dig out. Yeah, I, I'm in exactly in the same boat. I uh, like it's once you know how to pick apart a combo deck, you can find the exact creatures that you need in this toolbox. So we did see a uh, meddling mage with naming glimpse of nature. Uh, Dukes, there's sort of a deck like this, uh, with 
Cradle. Uh, Julian Nab was playing it a, a while back. He called it uh, NBC uh, or No Bad Cards. Um, yeah. It yeah, was, uh, I think... it's sort of a Cheerios Spanish Inquisition uh, combo deck. Yeah, I also saw, I I also saw uh, PK Pleasant Kenobi play something similar to this on like a meme, uh, one of his meme videos. Hmm. I know. So Kevin Dane, the the guy who uh, has been working on the Dane Mill in in uh, Legacy that I've been playing a lot of. Uh, is the is who was working on uh nbc with julian oh okay okay yeah and Champ uh, champagne it is essentially just a better elves but a more all-in elves and instead of your elves tapping for mana and doing all these fancy things and winning with like crater hoof and stuff like that you're just trying to literally for a lack of a better term uh, shit out as much uh, cobalt as possible in one turn to combo uh it Got a lot of blockers. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. wow. Uh, yo, dudes, you know, thank, thanks for coming to hang out with us, dude. Oh, like, good luck uh, at your meeting. Have a good work day. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, like, uh, <laughs> abrupt decay for the one on uh, the one colorless creature to give your uh, guy protection to swing in was insane all right and honestly i didn't see it going that way hey but like mb played that perfectly that was a very good creature toolbox win played to the outs correctly once you identify the deck and like honestly mad respect and sorry oliver sorry we didn't get to see you just go completely bonkers and flood the board with a ton of kobolds the new tier one is uh still getting there homie uh, that was a, a great round or a great uh, set of matches and uh, another successful meme night in the books. Yeah. Oh, did did Oliver just bring in the no? Just showing off the entire uh, the rest of the sideboard. Yeah. And honestly, th the reason why we do these events is because of the community. The community is so great. They really want to play these fun uh, decks that you know you don't see all the time. You don't get to play all this all the time either. If you don't own the deck or because you just don't want to get destroyed by a force of will you just want to just want to uh, play these fun decks you want to play these wild brews that you have meme nights tonight to do it so come get involved come join the discord come hang out with us it's it's a pretty good place to be in my opinion and don't forget uh mtg paper legacy just put it in the chat that's aka uh, beyond sadistic click on that link to go over to the discord and jam some games with us we're around all the time uh also the exclamation league that just got dropped in there. Our next month's league is uh, ready uh, to be signed up for. Uh, sorry, just laughing at Corey putting uh, that he is not rad in the chat. Um, thank you for the clarification. And uh, yeah, come. J I'll be signing up for the league. I'm ready to jam some games. I, I don't know what I'm going to play yet, but. Um, it's all it all it's always gonna be spicy. All right, it's gonna be a good time either way. So thank you all for joining us tonight. Hey, you know, I have been Dr. Leo, just here commentating on some fun decks, my homie Mike, and uh yeah, we'll see you all next time. Take it easy, everybody. Thanks for joining us.